Hi, I'm Mr. Rosengrant, and we are here with Petty Officer Culp from the United States Navy. Petty Officer Culp, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, happy to be here. Navy, everyone. <laughs> so we wanted to, since we can't have recruiters coming into the school right now with COVID-19, we wanted to do a video with you so you can give some information to our students about the Navy. So can you start by telling us a little bit about your background and uh, when you were in high school, what you were thinking about doing after high school and how your path led to the Navy? Yeah, sure, no problem. So hi everyone, my title in the Navy is Petty Officer Culp and my job title is called Nuclear Electronics Technician, which breaks down to Nuclear Reactor Operations or Engineering, which then further breaks down to being at a computer and making sure nuclear reactors don't explode. Um, I kind of joined the Navy in an unconventional route, in my opinion. A lot of you guys are right now in school thinking about what you want to do, what schools you want to pursue, careers. Um, I was in the same boat, except I had no idea. For most of my life, I wanted to pursue either an English degree or even going into veterinary medicine. And then I did a couple of job shadowings and realized I fainted at the sight of blood. So <laughs> veterinary medicine was not gonna be a good call for me. And then I was just still really uncertain just because I haven't had a chance to explore a lot of options. So after high school, I did some community college classes on the side, but really I spent a lot of time trying out different jobs, seeing what fields I enjoyed. I've worked in um, cruise lines, exotic pet sitting, um, babysitting, senior at home caregiver, house sitting. I've worked as a fruit picker farm laborer um, and a couple of other ones that probably I hadn't even heard of before. Uh, a lot of those taught me interesting skills, but none of them were really a good fit for what I wanted to do and my goals I wanted to accomplish in life. So finally, um, after about two years out of high school, I decided to go and talk to some of the military recruiters. Um, actually, my dad was in the Navy, which you think would have made me think of that sooner. But um, growing up, I'd sworn I'd never join the military because, you know, I want to do my own thing and I'd never listen to anyone tell me orders. Well, guess what most of any job is? Listening to someone tell you what to do all the time. So, <laughs> so I went and talked to a Navy recruiter and they have you take what's called an aptitude test, which shows what job skills or career areas you probably have an aptitude for, even if it's something you've never studied or been interested in before in your life. So that test showed that I had a good aptitude for engineering, and they then talked to me about the exciting nuclear engineering program. I had never heard of any of that or even thought of it, um, so I wasn't 100% understanding what they did tell me, but when they told me it was the most challenging program that they had, as well as there was a $12,000 bonus attached to just um, attempting to do the job, I was like, sign me up. Because in my head, you know, it's better to shoot for the stars and, you know, miss than to just try to be mediocre in life. As well as when talking to a military recruiter, they're like, if you suck at this job, listen, they'll put you in a different job that you're going to excel at. So win-win either way for me. So then eight years later, here I am getting to talk to all of you guys. Um, I was actually in Virginia for four years before this, working on the USS Gerald R. Ford. And now I will be out here in Lancaster area for the next three years working as a recruiter. So I've gotten to do a lot of things in the Navy so far, travel to different countries. Um, some of my favorites are definitely Italy, Venice, um, and then London, England, of course really great food. Um, I've gotten to get a bachelor's degree for free, no money out of pocket. And by age 25, I own my own car, my house, you know, just a lot of stuff that most people don't at that age don't get to accomplish. Um, so that's why I think the Navy ended up being a good fit for me. Well, um, if you're going to go and interested in Navy or military, you're going to ask, what's the difference between the branches? Well, each branch kind of has its own pros and cons. Um, obviously, I'm a little more familiar and kind of prejudiced toward the Navy, but what's really great about our branch is definitely we have the most travel opportunities. You're always going to be working attached to a ship or a boat, and that boat is going to be traveling everywhere across the ocean and getting to visit a lot of different countries. Um, various places you can visit could be Guam, Philippines, Australia, New Zealand, Korea, 
Japan, China, South America, Antarctica, Scotland, Spain, Italy, um, pretty much anywhere you could almost imagine our ships will go and visit because one of the biggest things is that the Navy patrols the ocean and maintains our free commerce, which is surprisingly kind of the backbone of the economy. And we all know how important that is and we don't want it to crash ever again. <laughs> as well as the Navy offers a lot of technical and mechanical jobs. So ranging from computer science, software to mechanical engineering, ele electronics, um, electrician jobs. We have a lot of that because all of our ships are now up to date with the most highest and up to date technology. Um, my ship was all touch screens, so it requires a lot of technical expertise, computer jobs, which if you don't want to stay in the military for all your life, it gives you a lot of great opportunities in the civilian world. Some of the other branches, you know, they're really cool, but there's not a lot of other uh, job crossovers for like carrying a gun and being able to march with a 40 pound backpack on you. Um, so that one gives you a lot of opportunities just from gaining that military experience and then being able to translate to a civilian job. The other thing that's really great about the Navy is that it gives you a lot of opportunities for other schooling. When you're on a ship, you're all you got. So in case of emergency or any kind of catastrophe or anything, you have to be able to rely on each other. The Navy then takes the effort to cross train everyone. So instead of being like an expert in one field, you're kind of a jack of all trades. So for instance, for my job, I have also been trained in fiber optics, um, radio repair, first aid and first responder training, firefighter training, damage control, welding, um, some soldering work, a lot of different areas that I never would have explored in any other job career field, which once again, gives you a lot more options if you were to get out of the military. For instance, my fiber optics schooling, um, starting out in any kind of fiber optic job, it's about $30 an hour. So not too shabby for someone who could, you know, get all this experience and training with just a high school degree. <laughs> um, some other things you might be really interested in is the fact that you make some really tight friendships. I'm sure you're in high school, you've got all your friends and you know, you're gonna be best buds for life. Well, you grow up and things change and you'd be surprised how you develop really strong new friendships once you leave high school and you figure out who are your true friends. I only talked to two people from my high school versus I have about 20, 30 people I talked to that I've met in the Navy in the last eight years, and they're all across the country from Hawaii to even overseas in Japan. So really getting to meet those people and develop those great bonds is one of the most amazing experiences, I think, that I didn't even expect when I joined the Navy. Um, so I mentioned that I got my college degree for free. So yes, I have a bachelor's in nuclear engineering technology. The Navy is really big on pushing higher education for everyone, just because, you know, the smarter you are, the better you can help the Navy. So it's a win-win either way. We offer several programs to help pay for any kind of college or even trade school or apprenticeship classes you might want to take. Um, one of them is our GI Bill, which offers about four years of college tuition, um, housing assistance, as well as covering your books, any kind of equipment you need, everything you need for your free degree. So that one is available when you leave the Navy. We also have several programs that are available while you're in the Navy. One of them is our tuition assistance program, which means they just flat out cover 12 to 18 credits um, every year. So that ends up being like one or two classes a semester you can take. Then we also have what's called an NC PACE or distance learning program. So that means even while you're out in the middle of the ocean, no internet, no way to do anything you would think, they have classes available for you. So they're by CD-ROM, they actually will fly out instructors to teach you these things. Anything you need to complete a class without having access to internet or an actual teacher. There's also CLEP tests. So you can take a test and basically gain credit for a class without having ever taken it. And we also have a really cool thing called the Joint Service Transcript. So basically the Navy, any training you get in the Navy gets put on this transcript. Then colleges are able to look at that transcript 
and apply Navy training to college credit. So just from my training in the Navy alone, I was able to get 78 credits toward my bachelor's degree. Saves you a lot of time and money that way, let me tell you. Um, especially if you're going for more technical degrees or more difficult ones, you know, not having to take a bunch of fluff classes or spending a bunch of money on classes you're not interested in or have nothing to do with your degree is really a great time saver. So if you want to go education, like I said, Navy is a great way. And, you know, if college classes aren't for you, but you still want to learn, the Navy will also cover you taking certification classes, trade schools, apprenticeship programs, as well as taking those certification tests, which can cost anywhere from $50 to $2,000 for some of the national certificates you need in trade schools. Really great option. I know people who've done eight weeks solar installation technician classes. And I know some people who've then gone on to do um, boiler training, a lot of jobs that you know, they didn't want to get that college degree. They just want to work with their hands. The other benefits besides just college and education you get with Navy is traveling. As I mentioned earlier, you also have really great medical, dental, health insurance. It's probably not top of your list right now, but let me tell you, um, when you're able to go to the doctor every time you're not feeling well and not have to worry about paying like 50 to $200 out of your pocket, it's a big relief. Um, we also have really great opportunities. Like I used to be wearing glasses. Then three months ago, the Navy was able to give me laser eye surgery for free. And now I see better than 2020. So <laughs> really great perk, especially when you have to wear masks and you get tired of your glasses fogging up every single time you go out. Um, so that is a really great benefit as well as they offer you free flights for you and your family. We have what are called um, space available flights. So military has planes that go all across the country and all across the world all the time. So you know, if they've got a seat on that flight open, you can jump in and then fly to wherever your heart's content. They also have the opportunity to take home and business loans through the military. And these loans do not require a down payment, which is usually the biggest hurdle for trying to get a loan. Um, so you know, if you want to buy your house, you don't have to worry about already having twenty or $30,000. You can just go ahead and get the loan and get the house of your dreams or even start a small business with it. Another kind of benefit that we get is um, some really cool opportunities to go to places for free. I'm talking Bush Gardens offers free tickets to military, SeaWorld offers free tickets to military, any national park, um, national museums offer free tickets to military. Um, kind of one of the ones you don't think about, but let me tell you, when you're able to just go to like a theme park every single year for free and bring your family and friends, it's, it makes you pretty popular, you know, with them, so. <laughs> um, Sounds like you, you covered a lot of the different benefits and there's a lot of job opportunities. You get trained for a job while you're in the military and that training that you get while you're in the military translates to good job opportunities when you get out of the military as well. So there's definitely, it sounds like there's a lot of benefits for joining the military. One of the things that our students struggle with is to know what it's like to be in the military. Can you talk a little bit about what like a typical day in the life of somebody that's in the military? And a lot of students have questions about like what boot camp is like, you know, they see things on the movies and things like that. So um, can you talk a little bit about the process for kind of joining the military and uh, what commitments you're making when you join the military? And, uh, you know, there's probably some sacrifices that you have to make to get the, the, those military benefits, right? Uh, and just kind of what it's like to be in the military, what a day in the life of someone that's in the military is like? Yeah, definitely. So the military process to join is kind of the same across all branches. Basically, you first start by talking with a recruiter like me, and then you will do a lot of paperwork, which is the number one thing in the military you're going to do. Um, but basically, it boils down to you taking that aptitude test I mentioned earlier, and then doing a medical, physical, or basically intense sports physical with the military. Based on those two scores that you get, will reveal what jobs you actually qualify for. So it's really important to be able to one score high on the aptitude test and to be able to have a clean physical. Um, then once you get those results and are shown what jobs you qualify for, you get to select the job of your choice as well as when it leaves for boot camp. 
Obviously, if you're still in high school, you have to wait till after graduation to leave. Um, for most people who join in their senior year, their date to leave for boot camp is about two to three months after graduation. So you have time to like hang out with your friends and family and make sure you get all your goodbyes in. Now, once you get to boot camp, it seems like a scary process for some people. Um, you do arrive at the airport. You're gonna have people telling you, hey, hurry up, get in a line. Hey, hurry up and get on this bus. Do this, do that. Yes, they're probably gonna be yelling at you. Um, once you kind of get to the actual boot camp itself though, it's easy to settle into your routine. Right now, due to COVID, you do spend your first two weeks basically chilling in a hotel room um, under quarantine. So not too bad of a deal, then you're getting paid two weeks to kind of hang out and do nothing. <laughs> then you'll actually start the boot camp. So yes, people will be yelling at you, telling you to stand up straight, go to attention, how to salute and have military bearing, how to wear your uniforms. Um, but I don't know about you guys, but my mom was actually a lot scarier than most of the drill sergeants because she would actually throw things at me and hit me versus they're not allowed to hit you. So, you know, they can just yell at you all day long, but it's not that actually as bad as my mom chasing me around with a wooden spoon when I did something wrong. <laughs> but yeah, so they'll be there to teach you kind of military bearing, the naval history and what it takes to be a really good sailor, as well as it gives you opportunity to kind of lean and begin to bond with everyone you're going through boot camp with. You form some really great friendships just from kind of misery loves company kind of deal. I still am Facebook friends and in a group with all everyone I went to boot camp with eight years later and every year on the date of our graduation, everyone checks in and says what they're doing new, if they're still in the military or not and kind of their accomplishments. And it's really great to see how everyone has evolved over the course of like eight years. Um, but once you do eight weeks of boot camp, like I said, yelling at you, doing push-ups, stuff like that, you get to graduate and then you'll go to your, what's called A school. So this is gonna be the school that's gonna teach you how to actually do your job. Um, it's a lot of like normal class, you know, eight o'clock to three doing books. Um, however, a lot of things that are different from normal school is the fact that it is less book work and more hands-on application. So yes, you'll do some classroom time, but then you'll also spend a lot of time actually showing how to apply that knowledge you learned and how it's actually applicable to your job. So once you finish your school and learn your job, that's when you get what we call sent to the fleet or you get told what ship or boat you're going to be working on. Um, so for me, when I left my school, I was then sent to the USS Gerald R. Ford in Norfolk, Virginia, and I was there for four years. For what a day in the life of someone in the Navy is, it's kind of depends on what job you have. Um, a lot of it though is kind of a normal, almost job like any other, you know, your job could start at 7.30 or 8 and then you work until the end of the work day or when every, all of your work is finished. Um, so for my job, a lot of it was dependent on when our work was done. So sometimes, you know, normal days start at 7.30 and we get out around two o'clock and sometimes, you know, you have to finish all of your work so you're there till five o'clock. But it's really great is that you're not just kind of wasting time on the clock, you know, you're not just trying to like, oh, I've got to earn my $8 an hour. You're just there to get your job done and do your work. And once that's accomplished, you leave. Um, there are, of course, sometimes when an emergency comes up and you might have to scramble or stay a little late or do something else. But what's really great is of course, everyone in the Navy you work with has been in your shoes. You know, they all started at the bottom, worked their way up. So we do what's called, you know, getting you on the back end, which means, hey, you know, it sucks that you had to work late this day, but we've got your back and we are going to let you go home early on this day. Um, that's kind of more when you're actually what we call in port. So your ship is still just like in the States, not going out. Once you're out to sea, it can vary. Um, a lot of our equipment needs to be running 24 seven. So some people will be working nights, some people will be working days, but it'll be a normal, like you have an eight hour work day. So while you're on the clock for your eight hours, you're doing maintenance, you might be like training or learning more about your job or studying some more for an exam, or you're going to be helping to teach other people. Um, once that is up though, then you've got the rest of your time to yourself. So on my aircraft carrier, we had five different gyms. So I'd go hit the gym a lot or go for a run on the flight deck and um, get to look across the ocean and watch dolphins swimming next to us. 
Um, some people like to go to our lounges where we've got a lot of video games set up, big flat screens put up to play video games. We have karaoke nights or basketball games, a lot of things just to kind of kill the time, as well as because you know, you're out to sea, you're in the middle of the ocean, there's not a lot of distractions. It's a really great opportunity to actually go and do your college classes if that's what you're trying to do. Because you know, it's a lot easier to work on an essay or an exam where you're not tempted to go out to eat or go out and hang out with your friends instead. So it isn't too bad or too different from just the normal job you think, except, you know, everyone's wearing the same uniform and you guys are probably hanging out together for a little bit longer than most people in most jobs. But for the Navy, at least, it is not what you see in the movies where, you know, it's a lot of screaming at you and marching across you know, the desert or, you know, getting told to boots on the ground. We're just normal people with a job to do and we're gonna go and do it. Um, <laughs> so not a scary process and definitely not like the movies. <laughs> um, let's see. The other thing to mention is um, I'm working in an engineering field and I'm a woman. It's like any other job field in STEM fields, they are definitely less women in the field. And I have no idea why, because we are definitely just as good or even better than most of the guys at the jobs. <laughs> um, as I mentioned earlier, for me, I hadn't even considered an engineering field until I was told like, hey, you would probably be good at this. So, you know, if you think or might even be interested in a STEM job, I definitely recommend you pursue it because I think it's turned out pretty great for me and opens up a lot of opportunities that you wouldn't even know are open to you. And you, it, the worst thing is like, people are just afraid to go for it. So just go ahead and try. And if you fail, you know, it's not a big deal. The only way to succeed is to get up every time you fall down. And the STEM fields are just really fun. I can't even describe like how great it is when you get into a problem, you're able to use your brain to solve it or you get to learn how to take apart machinery and put it all back together, or you have something that's not working and yet it's about to hold up a multi-million dollar ship from its mission, and you're the person who solves it. The satisfaction you get from that kind of work is just amazing and incredible. So I definitely recommend pursuing it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so thanks for sharing a lot of information about the military and about the Navy in particular and also your perspective as a woman in the military. That's, that's great to, to hear that. And hopefully um, some young women in high school that are maybe unsure or maybe thinking about it, hopefully they'll be inspired to look into it a little bit further. So if a student does wanna learn more, how can they find a recruiter? How do they reach out or contact a recruiter to find out more information? So lucky for anyone in this area, um, we're pretty easy to find. We are at the Armed Forces Recruiting Center right next to the Park City Mall. Um, however, if you were anywhere else in the country and you weren't sure where your local recruiter was, you could just log on to Navy.com and you just type in your zip code and it will pull up the closest recruiter you have to you, as well as, you know, social media. I have Instagram, Facebook, we're always out there. And even if you're nowhere near us, like I have people from all across the country sometimes send me messages or questions. We're all happy to help you and answer any questions you have because, you know, even if you don't end up joining the Navy or a different service, if you're just even considering the military, that makes you a pretty awesome person in my book. And I'm ready to help you in any way I can. <laughs> all right, Petty Officer Culp, thank you so much for giving us information today about the military. My pleasure. I was happy to talk to you all. And I said, I'm available anytime if you have any questions. I promise I don't bite and I'm not too scary. <laughs> Thank you.